Are you a process-oriented or outcome-driven athlete? Do you even know what either of these mean and which one will be beneficial for you? Well, in this video, we're going to break it all down so you can figure out which type that you should be so you can benefit in the sport of powerlifting. So let's get right into it. Alrighty, what's going on everyone? Coach Aaron here, back in another video. Thanks for tuning into another video. Let's get right into it. In this video, we're gonna break down the idea of being process oriented versus being outcome oriented. So first let's break down what both of these mean and then we'll break down which one will be beneficial for you and why. So when we go into the process oriented side, it makes sense. It's focusing on the process to get to the outcome or to get to the end goal. So you're focusing on the process. Let's say you're a student in school. What you're gonna do as far as going to class, what you're gonna do as far as studying at home or maybe studying in a group with other friends to get ready for some kind of exam so that you can do well on the exam versus being outcome oriented or outcome driven is you're just focused on the end goal. Well, I have to get 100% of my exam and that's all I'm going to focus on. And you can apply these same things when it comes to you as an athlete in the sport of power thing is that when you're focusing on the outcome that, hey, I have to be a national champion, I have to be a world champion, or you're focused on breaking some kind of American record or something like that, instead of focusing on the process of actually doing the things that are gonna lead to you growing and getting stronger. So your training plan, your nutrition plan, how much you're gonna sleep and your hydration, everything like that, focusing on technique and improving your technique to make you more efficient, having the right handler for meat and everything like that, focusing on those different processes will all add up and lead to you getting stronger and performing well on the platform and you can probably tell from how i'm explaining these two things which one is going to be more beneficial for you and that's going to be the process oriented style and they've even showed this in research when they've done it on students getting ready for exam is that they do better with cognitive tasks and things like that when they're focused on the process rather than just focusing on the outcome and one of the main benefits to being focused on the process side versus the outcome side especially in the sport of powerlifting is that you can control your process but you can't control your outcome Powerlifting is a sport that there's no defense it's not football it's not basketball it's not ufc or boxing or anything like that you go and do your lifts and your competitor goes and does their lifts and then you see who totals more now you could change your plan a little bit based on how your competitor is doing and your competitor can change your plan a little bit based on how you are doing but your top end strength is not going to change just because someone else is lifting more or less and their top end strength is not going to change whether you're lifting more or less so both you and your competitor have a max strength going into a competition regardless of what the competition is doing and you can't affect that person you can't you know go and yell out press commands or go and like kick them in the leg or something like that so in that case it benefits to focus on the process your process of how you're going to train how you're going to focus on your nutrition your hydration your sleep those things i've already mentioned to get you an outcome where you're going to be stronger in the platform Platform. Now that may not result in a higher placing because again, you don't know what your competitor is going to do and you don't know how many of your competitors are going to show up. Maybe three, four, five people as strong or stronger than you show up and you end up in fifth or sixth place. Or maybe none of them show up. Maybe they all don't want to do the competition. Maybe they get injured or sick or something like that. And then you end up in first place, all with hitting the same total and having the same strength. So not only can you not control the outcome when it comes to a powerlifting competition, also, you could have an outcome that doesn't match up with your process. So you can have a bad process and do things wrong and neglect nutrition, everything like that, and get lucky. And like I said, no one showed up at the competition, you get first place and you have a good outcome. On the flip side, you can do everything right as a process, stay on top of all your things and get stronger and hit PRs on everything and still not podium because the outcome was that a bunch of top competitors stronger than you showed up and they end up knocking you off the podium. So you can have a good process that leads to a bad outcome and you can have a bad process that leads to a good outcome. So again, that's why it's important to focus on your process first and focus on your long-term growth and development. If you're doing the right things in all these different areas, over time, you're gonna to continue to grow and get stronger and do better in the sport of powerlifting. The outcome will come from doing the process correctly along the way. But if you don't do the process correctly along the way, then you may get lucky sometimes and have good outcomes and then eventually it'll catch up to you and you'll have the bad outcomes and you won't perform as well as you want because you were neglecting these little things. The other thing is, like I said, that you can control your process. That means you can and review, analyze, and improve your process. So you can go and do an audit on yourself and say, okay, going into this competition, what things did I do right? What things can I improve upon? And then when you start your next training cycle, going into your next competition, focus on improving those things that you can improve upon. So for example, you may think initially, oh, I don't have time to focus on cooking my own meals or getting more sleep in or studying more on programming or technique or anything like that. But then you may do an audit on yourself and you say, okay, I'm watching 
three hours of TV a day. So now when we expand that out, that three hours of TV a day goes out to 21 hours a week and 84 hours in a standard month. So now you can tell yourself, okay, I'm spending 84 hours a month watching TV and then saying I don't have enough time to get an extra hour of sleep each night or you know watch some videos on programming or technique for an hour each night. So then you can then look at your process and say, can I make improvements there? Can I commit to you know maybe 30 minutes less per day or one hour less per day and then transfer that time over to going to sleep earlier or staying on top of my nutrition uh, prepping all my meals in advance for the week and so then you are basically auditing yourself looking at your own process saying i can prove these things in my process by making these adjustments and that's going to lead to a better outcome down the line so you want to be specific with how you're going to improve your process and set different intentions so you may set an, a specific intention that you're going to watch 30 minutes less of tv each day and go to sleep 30 minutes earlier each day. So now you're setting up a specific intention of what you're going to do, how you're going to switch the time that you're spending doing each thing to improve your process. And then you can hold yourself accountable or you can have your coach hold you accountable to that by checking, okay, am I actually watching less TV? What time am I going to sleep now versus what time I was going to sleep in the previous training cycle? So again, these are all benefits to being process oriented and allowing yourself to improve your process and hold yourself accountable to your process process along the way. So again, going back to the overarching idea about all this is that you want to be focusing on the things you can control and not focusing on the things you can't control. So you can't control the outcome. You can't control your competitor, what attempts they're going to take, how good their technique's going to be, whether they're actually going to sign up for the meet you're signing up for and those kinds of things. But you can control your own process. You can control the type of programming you're doing. You can control how much effort you want to put in improving your technique. You can control how good your nutrition is going to be whether you're going to go up a weight class down a weight class or recomp within the same weight class and then you can control what attempts you take in a competition and focus on what total you're going to get based on how you've progressed during that training cycle so that's why it's important to focus on the things you can control which is going to be that process side so that's why you want to be a process oriented athlete as that's going to be more beneficial for you especially in the long term to do better in the sport of powerlifting and if you're wondering how you can make improvements to your process like the things that I mentioned as far as technique, sleep, nutrition, hydration, everything like that, you need to click on this video right here and watch that next. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.